On August 17, 1877, two men wrestled on the floor of a saloon in Bonita, Arizona. A young man named Henry McCarty had answered back when Frank Windy Cahill, a blacksmith and notorious bully, labeled him a pimp. Now the pair were grappling for McCarty's gun. Then a shot rang out. Cahill was fatally injured and McCarty, who was 17 years old and had never murdered anyone before, went on the run. Historian Frederick Jackson Turner famously claimed that American democracy was forged in the westward expansion of the American frontier. He also suggested that the western U.S. may very well have helped forge a core American identity. And the Wild West itself was a place of party pioneers, settlers, cowboys, and entrepreneurs that's now become synonymous with notions of adventure and rugged individualism. The period is arguably best known for its outlaws, however, with the likes of Jesse James, Curly Bill, the Dalton Brothers, and Butch Cassidy still infamous today. But perhaps none of these legendary criminals have become as iconic as Billy the Kid. And according to psychoanalyst Alfred Adler, who scrutinized the myth of Billy the Kid in 1951, the gunslinger's legend is taken on an stature comparable to those of King Arthur or Robin Hood. Indeed, most artistic portrayals of the gunslinger tend towards one of two basic archetypes, romantic anti-hero or cold-hearted villain. However, a new historical analysis asserts that the kid may have had a hidden talent, suggesting a more nuanced view of the fabled outlaw. The kid's story is certainly a compelling one. The future gunfighter is thought to have been born Henry McCarty in late 1859 in a New York City slum. McCarty and his Irish mother, Catherine, eventually up sticks to Wichita, Kansas. However, before the pair finally settled in New Mexico in the 1870s. But tragedy hit McCarty at a young age. In 1874, Catherine succumbed to tuberculosis, making her then 14-year-old son an orphan. After his mother's death then, McCarty bounced between boarding houses and foster families, in time, though, he'd befriend some local miscreants, with one of the troublemakers, who went by the name of Sombrero Jack, apparently roping into thieving from a Chinese laundry. Subsequently, McCarty's boarding house landlord informed the police of the teenager's annex, and McCarty was arrested for the first time. However, the boy never went to court for the alleged crime. After climbing up the jailhouse chimney, he made a clean getaway. Two years later, McCarty shot Frank Cahill and Bonita, committing the first of what is said to be several murders. But while McCarty originally bolted from the scene of the crime, he returned to town within a matter of days. After that, he was captured by Justice of the Peace, Miles Wood, and incarcerated at Camp Grant, now Fort Yet again, though McCarty escaped before he punished. Shortly thereafter, he assumed the alias of Wilhelm H. Bond, although others dubbed him. claimed the life of Sheriff Brady, among several others, reached ahead in July of 1878. Now numbering as many as 60 men, the regulators hold themselves up in various buildings around the community of Lincoln and shot it out with Dolan and Murphy's allies over several days. However, the regulators were eventually driven out when Colonel Nathan Dudley brought reinforcements to Fort Stanton. The regulators subsequently disbanded and a $500 bounty was given from Bonnie's head. But while legend holds that Bonnie was responsible for around 21 deaths during his criminal career, historical experts believe the real figure is realistically no more than nine. In fact, the kid's reputation as a violent outlaw has been somewhat exaggerated. He never partook in robberies for one, apparently preferred instead of engaging in cattle roasting. Nonetheless, Bonnie did not flinch when threatened. In one well-known incident that took place in January 1880, the outlaw reportedly approached a belligerent drunk in a New Mexico saloon on the pretense of admiring his gun. Bonnie is said then to have taken the weapon, deftly revolved its cylinder so that the chamber was empty, then returned it. Later that night, when the drunk attempted to shoot Bonnie, his gun did not fire, so Bonnie shot back and killed him. Still, there's evidence to suggest that Billy the Kid may have had another talent than mere gunslinger. In fact, historian Chuck Osmar 
In particular, Osmar suggested the outlaw translated for a Gaelic-speaking Irish immigrant who was unable to understand English. As evidence for this claim, Osmar cites an interview given by one Clark Hust in 1954. Hust was an employee of an Irish immigrant named Pat Coughlin. He had managed a cattle ranch in Tolerosa, New Mexico. And according to Hust, Coughlin and his wife had a niece called Mary. However, Mary could not converse in English and so needed an interpreter to speak with the ranch workers. That interpreter, moreover, was Billy the Cat. In a 2015 article for True West Magazine, Osmar added, In examining all the extant territorial newspapers from this period, I came across a mention in a Masilla newspaper that stated the Coughlins and their niece had been in town visiting. The homesick niece ended up back in Ireland. Coughlin, who died in 1911, bequeathed in his will what was left of his ranch to his nephew and two nieces. And since Bonnie is thought to have grown up surrounded by Irish immigrants in New York, it is possible that he did indeed learn to speak Gaelic, possibly from his mother. Indeed, it's still very common for second-generation immigrants to speak their parents' language as well as that of their birth country. In fact, Bonnie may even have been trilingual, as he likely rubbed shoulders with Mexicans and Mexican-Americans. After all, New Mexico was part of Mexico's national territory until the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo ceded it to the United States. And indeed, Bonnie's famous last words were in Spanish. In 1880, the kid was brought to heel by Pat Garrett, the sheriff of Lincoln County, who found him hiding out in Stinking Springs, New Mexico. Bonnie was then incarcerated in Lincoln's courthouse after a guilty verdict was returned for his involvement in the murder of Sheriff Brady. But while a date was set for his execution, that event would not take place. On April 28, 1881, Bonnie made an audacious escape, killing two guards and stealing a horse to do so. Then, Bonnie fled to Fort Sumner, New Mexico, where he remained under the protection of locals for a few months. However, during the evening of July 4, 1881, he made the fateful mistake of visiting local Upon seeing a silhouetted figure in the darkness of a bedroom. Recognizing Bonnie's voice, Garrett responded with his gun and shot the outlaw in his heart. But despite the widespread acknowledgement that Garrett had slain the kid, rumors later emerged that Bonnie was in fact alive. Some of the more outlandish theories suggested that Garrett had assisted in faking his demise. And in the 1940s, a man called Brushy Bill Roberts even contended that he was the kid himself, although his claim was subsequently disproven. Today, then, most historians accept the conventional narrative that Garrett did indeed kill Bonnie. Meanwhile, no single outlaw in the history of the West has received more attention than Billy the Kid, with thus two books, films, and TV programs dedicated to his life. Furthermore, the media even went so far as to begin romanticizing the figure immediately after his death, with newspapers publishing Thank you.